Welcome back to the XM Podcast. Here is your host, licensed mental health therapist, Matthew Kanabi. So I mentioned um, about a podcast or two ago that we were going to start a new series on the XM Podcast. We have one series going, which we will pick up in the near future called Trauma Talk. But this series is a bit different in that we're going to be introducing some different types of therapy that we utilize at Emerge Counseling Ministries. The purpose of this is to one, educate our audience to better understand the types of modalities we utilize in session. Also, it's to save time. Therapists can refer their clients to these several podcasts that we'll be doing over the next several weeks to help clients better understand the process and be able to spend more time in session actually doing clinical work rather than just talking about what we want to do. So today I have two guests that are going to help us get a better understanding of a therapy called DBT. Please welcome these two very intelligent ladies to the show. Licensed professional counselor, Grace Dusick, and licensed independent social worker, Anna Copeland. My name is Grace Dusick. I'm a licensed professional counselor, and I'm also a chemical dependency counseling assistant. And so I um, work with all populations. I work with little kiddos, all the way up to older adults. I do um, a lot of like teen work and like kind of like young women. Uh, and I also work a lot with groups. So I have like a group here at Emerge where we talk about uh, specifically DBT and eating. Nice. And Grace, how long have you been at Emerge now? Uh, it's been a little over two years. Okay. Nice. And Anna, uh, share us uh, a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Anna Copeland. I am a licensed independent social worker. I primarily do counseling with adults. I've had a few few kids that I've worked with. Um, most of the clients I work with you know, deal with like anxiety, depression, so, and probably primarily substance abuse. Currently, I'm working with Re- at Restore. Uh, it's a residential Christian, uh, long-term residential, you know, you know, drug addiction facility. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I've, I've been with Emerge though since summer of 19. Okay. And, and just, we won't get into um, a big part of it, but can you talk a little bit about Restore? Because it's, it's a really cool thing and it's kind of a new um, experience for Emerge to be connected with. So it's, it's a 12-month program. Um, there's four phases. The first phase lasts 30 days and that's the foundation phase. Uh, the guys are pretty much kept separately from everybody, all the other phases for the most part, um, unless they're having intentional connections with the other guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's where they pretty much get the foundation of, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, the, the relationship with Jesus. That's the, that's the goal there is, is not recovery. It is that relationship with Christ. Yeah. And so they come into the program. Uh, they think they're coming in for recovery. And then once they, they realize it's, it's that deeper relationship. Um, it, you know, it's, it's, it seems easier, I think for them, yeah. but they, they're there for four months. The second, third phase, fourth phase are all 16 weeks. Okay. So it's and, a, it's and restore is—is is this for um, any type of addiction, or is it alcohol, or is it drug addiction? So it's it's drug and alcohol addiction. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So your 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 population there—it's all men, right? And it's all uh, people who have um, been dealing with drug or alcohol um, right. addictions. I, I we we've we've got a little bit of. Um, you know, uh, we've talked about it. We've, we've been uh, a little bit uh, educated on what's going on at Restore. And I'm just super excited about that being part of our uh, our team, which I think is really great. And maybe later down the road, you and I can talk more about that. Maybe we'll bring uh, Dr. Dave into a conversation and, and really highlight <laughs> Restore. So so the purpose of today, what we're going to do on our, on our program, this is going to be the first of uh, several uh, series. And what we're trying to do is we're taking different therapies that we utilize at Emerge, um, and a lot of us do on, on, a, on a big level. And what we're doing is we're doing a podcast on each of these therapies individually. And the point of that is, is one, it, it, it streamlines the um, therapeutic process. As you and I, the three of us were just talking, uh, as therapists, we spend a lot of time talking about what we're going to do. And I know for myself, we get these clients that come in and they need help now. Like we can't take three, four, five sessions and go through and talk about like DBT, what we're going to be talking about today 
we're hoping to be able to utilize this so that therapists can um, send, you know, do an intake and go, hey, check out this link from this podcast. This will give you a little bit more background, and then we can kind of t- uh, discuss any of the questions you may have from that. But this is a kind of the road that we're going down. So today's topic is DBT. So Anna, would you mind kind of giving us a little bit of an understanding what that is? What does it stand for? Um, what is it? I mean, to me, it sounds like some type of like wrestling move or something like I'm going to put on the DBT, you know what I mean? So it's like, I want to, yeah. I want to unpack a little bit about what is DBT. So DBT stands for dialectical behavioral therapy. Uh, it's a, it's a manualized skill-based type of a CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy. And this was actually developed back in the eighties. And the original goal for this was the treatment of borderline personality disorder <laughs> Uh, Marshall Lenahan is the one who developed this, and um, it's it's actually used now for more than just that. It's used for, um, you know, anxiety, depression, bulimia, binge eating, bipolar disorder, post traumatic stress disorder, and also substance abuse. And I said I use this with every single one of my clients, Mm -hmm. and and to me, it just seems like a way to learn how to cope with life. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think they teach it in schools like they, I mean, mean, I don't think they teach it in schools, you know, coping, you know, and I think sometimes that's why kids maybe fall into addiction and stuff at an early age. But I think it's a good way to learn how to cope with extreme emotions, um, stress. I mean, all those different types of things. And there's, there's, there's four different components. So there's, there's core mindfulness skills. Okay. And that kind of teaches awareness, being present, focusing, focuses on acceptance. And a lot of these you know, you're going to see that it gets you out of your head. You know, that's, that's the goal is sometimes people can be so stuck in their head and they really struggle with that. Mm -hmm. Um, The second one is interpersonal effectiveness and that teaches interaction skills. Like with, you know, the people around us, the people that we have relationships with, uh, it includes assertiveness, problem solving, um, personal boundaries, conflict resolution, and then emotional regulation techniques is is a really good one. As far as um, it involves properly identifying emotional states and that's, you know, that's, that's important because sometimes people, you know, people just can't identify their emotions. Um, so if you find yourself overactivated, these techniques teach you, you know, to lower your arousal. It's important to, to be able to identify the obstacles that may be experiencing um, in the shifting your emotional states. So these skills help you to increase focus on positive events and decrease focus on negative events. Great. Um, and then distress tolerance skills that can help lower impulsive behaviors by increasing the ability to tolerate emotional um, extremes. Um, so, you know, by using distracting, self-soothing, um, improving the moment, and then thinking about, you know, like pros and cons and acceptance skills as well. And sometimes if you just, I, I know for myself, I use this a lot for myself. I mean, it, mm. it has helped me in just the day-to-day stuff when I'm really stressed out and I just need a moment to chill out. You know, I might have a cup of coffee. I hold, you know, hold that cup in my hand and I feel the warmth of the cup. Mm-hmm. I smell the coffee. I can see the coffee. So what I'm doing is I'm using the senses in my body to get out of my head. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it just relaxes me. I can smell it. I can smell the coffee. So I'm using as many senses as possible, you know? Is that kind of of like a form of grounding in a a way? Absolutely is. It absolutely is. And it just, it just, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of helps you to calm down and come to that, that, that place of, because sometimes, you know, you get stuck in your head. You can't even think straight. It sure. brings you back to that place of logic and rationale and, you know. Mm-hmm. And Grace, so. when you, you utilize um, DBT, what are some of the things initially that you may share or say to new clients when you're talking about this? Because I think you use this in a group setting as well. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think what wonderful things about DBT is it's so good at emotion recognition, Right. So many of my clients come in and they can't even like stop and take a, like a, an assessment of how they're feeling. Um, and I will ask them, okay, so like, what are you, like, how are you feeling right now? Like, how, like what's going on inside of you? And they're like, oh, well, I think, and I'm like, okay, but like, how are you feeling? And they, it just, we can't get there. It's not something that we're taught naturally. And mm-hmm. uh, not something that we like, like, you know, you know, saying like, we don't learn this in school. We don't know how to like identify our feelings. And I think it's such a great place to start. We're going to stop. We'll learn to just identify what we're feeling and then we can start to apply some of these emotion regulation skills. And it's so helpful when we're reacting to things and we don't know why we're doing this. Well, what are we feeling? Let's identify what we're feeling and see what's causing this reaction. Isn't it funny? I, I've had this happen to me 10,000 times. When you ask somebody, 
tell me how you feel. And then their response is, well, I think, and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't ask you what you're thinking. I want, to, but we correlate those two things as being the same thing. And Anna, have you experienced that? Absolutely. I mean, clients do have a uh, have a difficult time identifying that. And it's you know, I, I I've even noticed sometimes I think with you know I work with more guys than women. You know, at, at the residential because it is all men, mm-hmm. and they seem like they're they're good with the emotion of anger. That's a good one. That's a safe. That's a safe emotion because it's 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 a manly. Emotion, I guess. I don't know. (laughs) I don't want to sound, you know, too stereotypical with that. But as far as the other emotions, they just don't. So, you know, that's like one of the first things we have to work through and to educate on that. Yeah. And so, Grace, when when you're going through that, how do you utilize DBT to help them connect, move away maybe from the cognitive response to connecting into the emotional response? Yeah. So the first thing I do is try to get them into their body. Because they're so caught up in the left side of their brain, you know, that cognitive functioning mm-hmm. that they can't get to the right side. And so getting them to their body, especially through like kind of left and right movement, we call that bilateral. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to connect both sides of their brain. And so, okay, so what are you noticing in your body? What sensations? And a lot of times I have to actually teach my clients sensation words. They don't even like understand that. And I didn't either. Right. And so what are we feeling? Well, I feel like a tightness in my chest. Okay, let's explore that. Where is this tightness coming from? What are, what can we identify that might be an emotion associated with the tightness in my chest? And typically it's like, I'm feeling stressed. I'm feeling worried. Right. Mm-hmm. And so then once we start to get them out of their left brain into their body, we can start to access that right brain. Yeah. Grace, can you talk a little bit about the group that you run and, and what DBT looks like in, in a group setting? Yeah. DBT is actually really great for group uh, therapy. It just translates really well. Um, so my group specifically is, uh, for eating behavior. Mm-hmm. So we have specifically overeating. And so, uh, recognizing that typically that is a numbing behavior, mm-hmm. right? I am feeling distressed and I don't want to feel distressed. That's uncomfortable. So let me eat. And, you know, for us, we focus on eating that for other clients that could be drugs. It could be your phone. It could be hours of, uh, Netflix, you know, but for what we focus on is eating. And so, uh, what we're doing is we're trying to help the clients get into their bodies, understand what they're feeling physically, what they're feeling emotionally, and then learning to um, acknowledge that. So a big part of mindfulness is, is awareness and acceptance, right? So just become aware of what I'm feeling, becoming okay. It's okay. It's You're allowed to feel stressed right now. You're allowed to feel anxious. You're allowed to feel angry, right? Okay. So acknowledging it being, and then just like, learning to self-soothe from it when appropriate. So holding that emotion, once we kind of understand it and feel it, then we can kind of regulate it. Yeah. It sounds like too, you're, you're giving them a lot of language to put to these things that maybe we didn't have language for before. Um, I, I know for me, and this is probably, you know, I, I, I use it with adults, but I, I think it's meant more for kids, but I use the feeling wheel mm-hmm. all the time because I think... I think I feel um, (laughs) that too often we don't really go to the feeling words, you know? And so um, it sounds like from what you guys are explaining, DBT is also educational in the sense that you're giving them um, more language to put with these things that are going on in the body. And I think one, one thing I've noticed and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong um, when, like when you have an infant and the infant can't speak, but it needs something, it acts out and cries. Like when they need their diaper change, um, they cry. Or when they're hungry, they cry and act out. I have found this with adults too. When they don't have the language to express how they're feeling, it usually comes out in anger or uh, a big emotion. Oh, you know what I mean? Because they're frustrated. Do you guys, do you guys resonate with that? Mm-hmm. Definitely. I, I think like they, they need, they need the words. They need the way to express it. Sometimes even verbal though, isn't always I've noticed. I mean, journaling is, is, is big too for some clients because mm. they seem like they might have an easier time writing about something than even talking about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, I'd like to do, Anna, if you wouldn't mind, let's just say um, I'm a new guy at restore and what might be some of the things that initially you would do 
with somebody who is brand new, has never heard of DBT before, where do you think we would start and, and what kinds of things do you think I would need to know? I mean, I like to give somebody something as soon as they come in. And especially with these guys, their emotions are all over the place. That first week, they're, they're, they're very raw, you mm-hmm. know, and they're very emotional. And I, you know, I'm doing this assessment with them, but I still want to give them something else. Right. And their, their, their thoughts are everywhere. So I'll do the exercise with them as, you know, that's like, I know you're a lot in your head right now. You're really struggling with your thoughts you, you had mentioned. And I would just do the exercise with them. Like right now, you know, if they have glasses on, I would say, can you feel the glasses on your face right now? Mm-hmm. I want you to zoom into that area and fill your glasses. Mm-hmm. You know, can you feel your big toe right now? Just focus in on your big toe. Mm-hmm. Okay, focus in on your back against the chair. Yeah. And I'm like, guess what you're not doing right now? You're, and they're like, I'm not thinking. I'm like, you're right. You're, mm-hmm. you're, you're, you're not in your head right now. Yeah. And just giving them those few little things that they can do. You know, it's like if, you know, they have to do their own chores there. Yeah. I'm like when you're washing the dishes, make it about the dishes. Mm-hmm. Don't be, you know, try not to allow yourself to be so stuck in your head. You know, use, use that as an opportunity to practice being out of your head. Yeah. You know, smell the soap, feel the warm water, you know, those kind of things. So I always try to give them a few of those kind of things to help them with that, that, that emotional rawness that they might be feeling right away. And so f- to, get, um, to get some of these guys that you're working with out of their head, what benefits do they get by doing that? So b- let's explain what, what that means by being in your head. And then when you okay. practice some of these things, what, what kind of relief that, that gives them? First of all, they're, they're thinking about their past. There's so much shame yeah. that they're dealing with, you know, the, the mess they've made of their lives, the, you know, the people they've disappointed in their lives, you know, this is the kind of things I hear from them. And, the, you know, those are the things that make them want to go back out and use mm-hmm. is those thoughts. They're, they're so, it's so uncomfortable to, to be in that place mm-hmm. in the past. They've dealt with that by using. Now we're trying to get them to try something different. Mm-hmm. And by teaching these, some of them skills, it's helping them to learn to maybe process it a little slower, but, but it's important that they have these skills to manage their emotions, you know, some distress tolerance skills to allow them to have moments of, of, I don't know, calmness and, and peace and not be so, you know, so raw. And so, you know, their emotions all over the place, you know, and it, they've even said that it just gives them a little distance from their thoughts then. Mm-hmm. They can come back at their thoughts, you know, at, at times and it, in being able to come in and out of it by focusing on other things helps them, you know? Yeah. I mean, we live in a country that is um, superstars at practicing avoidant behavior. Right. You know, it's like <laughs> we, we are conditioned to do so, whether it's TV, mm-hmm. video games, uh, pornography, uh, drugs and alcohol. I mean, our whole world is set up to be um, not present with ourselves and not wanting to deal with the garbage that's going on in our head. And hearing you guys talk, I had a session yesterday. Uh, I do Calm Space, which you guys know, um, which is a um, a relaxation technique, but it's also kind of takes us to uh, another place that we create in the mind. And I, I bring the Holy Spirit into that. But initially to get into Calm Space, Uh, I'll ask uh, the client to notice what their feet feel like against the floor. And we'll just kind of spend a minute doing that. And then if they're sitting, um, just really focus in on what the chair feels like against your back. And yesterday I have a relatively new client and I had him practice that. And I I did a podcast in the first season that was just calm space so that I send it to all my clients. I go, just practice it, practice it. It was the first time he practiced it. He got on yesterday. He goes, Matt, he goes, it like unleashed all of this stuff. He's like, it was like the, the dump button on your computer where it's just like all of this stuff, I got to reset. And it's because it's like, we sit with all of this stuff swarming all of the time in our head. And what we try to do is avoid it. We try to run away from it. And sometimes, you know, just by getting into the here and now, and, and, and what I heard you say is a lot of people are like, what I've done and getting stuck in a past that is not even real anymore. And, and helping them kind of move from that and moving into the here and now so that they can start heading into a direction that is more healthy and more positive. Great, Grace, what are, you, what are your thoughts around some of those things? And, and, and give me some, maybe uh, some experiences you've had using DBT. 
I mean, I think what you're talking about is such a big issue for so many of my clients, right? We live in a numbing culture. That's Mm -hmm. what we do. Um, But that doesn't stop the thoughts, right? And we are so good at condemning ourselves and beating ourselves up. And when the only thing operating in us is our left brain telling us how awful we are, it's, we can't regulate. We can't, we can't just function in daily life. Right. And so many of my clients are like, yeah, I'm struggling at work. I can't even focus on my work or uh, my husband and I, we fight constantly. And I don't know why, like, I just, I I wish I could get over these things and I can't. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So just being able to stop. And I'm going to say again, get out of your head, get out of that left brain into your body, into your right brain. We're going to start to access what's actually going on. uh, What is going on emotionally in us. Mm. Um, And one of the things I love about DBT is it sets us up so much for some of the other um, therapies that we can use. Right. So uh, in my first round of doing the group I'm doing, uh, I did uh, an emotions imagery exercise. And so I had them like really imagine an emotion, give it like um, a color, give it a feel, a texture, all these things, mm. and like just um, send it away. And there was a whole big thing. And uh, one of the people in my group came back to me and said, that blew my mind. I had never even known that this emotion was an issue for me. Mm-hmm. took it back to um, their individual counselor and their individual counselor was able to find out that that was a part. So if you t- talk about IFS, right. Mm-hmm. It was able, he was able to go and do like some significant work with his individual counselor. And I, DBT can be so helpful because it's really setting us up, setting our clients up for doing some of the more intensive work, you know, we're giving mm-hmm. them that groundwork. And it's just, it's so cool to see that simple things, getting out of our left side of our head, getting into our right brain, you know, we can really start to, um, see like patterns and behaviors like really uh, start to shift. You know, you, you make a really good point. Uh, And we're going to be doing a a podcast on IFS. Uh, We'll be doing one on EMDR, but I think um, because I primarily use those two um, therapies, oftentimes there is something in the system when you go right after EMDR, IFS, something, a part of the system comes in and shuts everything down. And I've had that happen so many times when we start to process. And, and if you're listening and you have no idea what EMDR is or IFS is, listen to the next couple of uh, podcasts because we'll explain those. But it's part of accessing the emotional brain and having an experiential moment. But for so long, so many people have trained themselves to dissociate or shut down that emotional part of the brain that it's almost like we have to rewind and then start again at DBT to be able to get to that, that ability to even open up because so many people have been practicing not connecting with their emotional brain for so long that it it becomes difficult to even get there. Grace, if if I were a, well, if I'm a new client, what do you think I would need to expect? Like, what do I expect like when we throw like these letters out, DBT, IFA, EMDR, it's overwhelming. It's like, mm-hmm. um, what does that mean? And, and it, are you going to put things up against me and shock me? Or, or what, like, is it, what do you, what is a, a client to expect when a, a therapist says, hey, we're going to try to do um, some DBT in the next couple of sessions? Um, yeah, I think if we can go back to what Anna was saying when she was kind of laying it out, that the four kind of skills, the tenets of DBT, which is distress tolerance, mindfulness, emotion regulation, and interpersonal effectiveness. So we're just going to really start at like the emotions. We're going to help you recognize your emotions, help you kind of um, calm down, you know, not, not let them overtake you. Uh, mindfulness is a skill we're going to use to do that, right? And so we're going to ask you to get into the here and now, that state of awareness and acceptance. Um, and we're going to use that to kind of help us now apply to our, our interpersonal experiences, right? And so I'm going to recognize my emotions. I'm going to learn skills to calm them down. And I'm going to use these skills to, to just make me a more effective communicator, uh, to like interact with my um, friends, family, coworkers in a way that um, isn't so, I guess, heightened, you know, that emotionally like charged heightened um, mm-hmm. state that we can get in and we don't even know why. Yeah. And so um, Anna, if somebody's listening right now, maybe they're not in therapy, but they've heard us kind of talk about these things. What are some of the um, markers that you think um, we need to um, communicate so that somebody listening might go, oh, wait a minute, that, that kind of sounds like maybe, maybe I need to go seek out counsel. 
actually, I think everybody probably needs counseling, <laughs> my, myself included. That's a good answer. That, as long as we are thinking people, you know, I think, you know, I think, I, you know, that, you know, that's the, sometimes we struggle with that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to me, I mean, it's the learning how to cope effectively. We all have relationships, so we have to know how to have relationships, healthy relationships, we all have emotions, so we need to ha- know how to deal with our emotions. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of funny. The one thing I told my clients is they they don't have drinking problems. They have thinking problem. Mm-hmm. you know? And That's it's like, really it, as long as we are thinking, we probably could, you know, overthinking and having thoughts about our thoughts. And, you yeah. know, I think as a human being, we all, I mean, we all do that. We all have overthinking. We all have, you know, we all can use some help with all those things. Yeah. I think too, like if somebody were listening and, they, and they're noticing in social relationships in work relationships, they're having a difficult time regulating emotions or Mm -hmm. responding appropriately. Um, I've had a lot of conversations with clients where they're like, I don't know why I get so amped up and there really isn't a trigger or somebody says something and I interpret it incorrectly. And then my response is massive. And so uh, I, I think those are things that are initially to me, if somebody's listening going, you know, oh my gosh, that's me. Like that would be a, a, a definite cue. Uh, what do you think, Grace? Yeah, I think that's such a great point. And I would just add um, any kind of like behaviors or like um, addiction tendencies that you would have. So like if like, you know, for instance, eating like my group, but if you um, do like this, I can't get myself to like do the things I want to do. Why? Like, why can't I just like kind of get up and wash my dishes, you know, when your um, desires and your behaviors aren't matching up, that's, I think, a good indicator of like, you know, come in and see like, what's, what's the block there? Yeah. So uh, I appreciate you guys so much. This is, I think, really helpful. Is there any like last word that you guys would like to share around DBT or, or connect with um, our audience and, and, and have a kind of a parting word? Uh, Anna, you're more than welcome to go first. Um, I mean, I just think it can be really, you know, beneficial to, to, you know, first of all, to understand what all these different therapies are and how they can help you or benefit you. Uh, but I feel like DBT is one of those ones that can be, can be used with every client, you know, and and I, I, I see how they kind of mold together with other therapies too. I mean, they kind of go hand in hand with EMDR as well as cognitive behavioral therapy. I mean, you know, with the thoughts and all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah. I'm. Good. I, so, I just think it's a really good model. Yeah, I think I, I think that's a great point. DBT kind of lends itself to be utilized. And, and we were talking in the beginning. The more and more you guys talk, I don't think I realized what I was doing was DBT, but I think I do DBT in every session. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I don't think I labeled it that way. Grace, what about you? Uh, I think the thing I'd love to point out is just how big it's been for me, especially in my spiritual life. I use imagery a lot in my spiritual life, you know, mm-hmm. um, and. I had like a long time where I had like this like image of a house and God was outside the house and I will not let him in, right? And just being able to use that imagery and to like work through it, it like really helped me get over a big pump in like just like some of my like my own like spiritual battles. And I just I really think that it just has so much power to not only help us in our daily lives, but also help us, you know, as we're connecting with Jesus and like all the all the hardships that come along with that as well. Yeah. Well, ladies, I uh, so appreciate your time. I appreciate your expertise and uh, your willingness to kind of come on a a podcast and and, and talk about these things. Thank you so much for for, um, being here and God bless you both. Dialectical Behavior Therapy, DBT, is a type of cognitive behavioral therapy. Its main goals are to teach people how to live in the moment, develop healthy ways to cope with stress, regulate their emotions, and improve their relationships with others. Hopefully this was helpful opening up this landscape in regards to understanding DBT. Thank you, Anna and Grace, for sharing your expertise with us uh, on the show today. We will next be discussing EMDR, so please don't miss out on that. Please feel free to email the show at experience at emerge.org for more questions. Share these podcasts with others and give us a like or a comment if you like what we're doing. Also, for all things Emerge, go to emerge.org. Well, until next time, or when our Savior comes, God bless.